Hi guys, Sheldon from Find It again. Uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're actually going to do uh, a, a tutorial on, on how to make a bowstring for a recurve. Um, generally the principles we use for making recurve strings, we also apply to making compound strings uh, in a very similar manner, just slightly different tensioning is involved when making compound versus recurve. Um, so we have to make this string for a customer, so um, I'll actually walk you through it step by step very carefully. Um, if there's something that I've missed uh, or you don't catch something when you watch this review um, or this tutorial, uh, guys flick me a, a message on YouTube and I'll explain that step uh, in detail. But I will try and keep this as, as uh, well versed for you as possible. So um, this video will be very heavily edited. edited. So uh, ho hopefully it doesn't jump around too much. But um, for now, let's get into making this string. Okay guys, so <clears throat> here's our string jig here, as you can see. Um, I've set the jig up, we're making a, a, a 66 inch string. So this is all set and ready to go. You'll notice my ends uh, are on about a 45 degree angle from, from the block, and you'll see why shortly. Um, tools that we're gonna need, sharp scissors, always very handy. Try and use scissors rather than a Stanley knife. You're less likely to slip and cut the string accidentally or break it in any way. So always try and get um, really nice sharp scissors. These are actually hairdressing scissors because I find that they're the sharpest and they've got the smallest point on them so you don't tend to cut into the string. Now today because we're actually going to make a, a, a black and red string which will actually turn out to be closer to a burgundy colour um, we're going to do a split string. So when we're doing that, you can buy these little tools from Biter. It's a little string making tool that you can see here. And this will be quite a useful little tool when we're doing the demonstration today. So I will try and focus on getting close-ups where I, I think we need to get the close-ups done. Um, and hopefully from there we'll be able to cover everything that we need to know. The other thing that you'll need throughout this process, if you've got gloves, gloves come in handy because the strings are very sharp. Piece of leather, any old piece of leather. Um, you can also use cloth or the gloves themselves to do this. <coughs> and you'll need a cigarette lighter as well. So this is pretty much everything you're gonna need. Um, of course, your string, all that kind of stuff. Now the string that we're using today is BCY 8125. Um, I find this to be pretty much the best string that we can use for recurve. Um, you can use it for compound as well. It has very minimal stretch. Um, it's not too stiff, it does give a bit of flexibility, but excellent string to work with, great quality as well. So let's get into it and um, we'll focus on a couple of things. Okay, so we're going to start with the string. We're going to start with the first. Uh, layer of the string so we'll start with black now for the interest of filming this um, we're going to focus on the start I will take a snapshot of the string finished in before we serve it and turn it so I'm just going to focus on this point here but something to keep in mind is as we come around the string we always come by one post so we don't go around the back of the post as we're doing the initial tie off of the string or the start of the string we stay on one post but we start our tie off on the opposing post so um, like I said we're using 8125 now generally speaking uh, the best string to use for your recurve you hear people talk about fat and thin strings or 16 strand strings or 18 strand strings um, things like that uh, most of the strings that I use in here are 18 strand I find 18 strand is a, is a much more stable string for shooting uh, on a general basis. So to, in order to get, if you were doing just a straight one colour string, uh, you would generally just do nine passes of the string. But because uh, we're going to make a split string, then we will actually do five passes of each creating 20 strands. Okay, so I'll start with the black and you'll see how we start off. So you've got your two posts here. There's a little knob here and a little knob here. 
all jigs are slightly different, but the principles are roughly the same. If you don't have a post to start off, put a screw in your jig in the side and use that as your tie off point or start off point. So we're going to loop it around here probably six times, seven times, enough that when you pull on it, it's not going to come. We're going to come around the back and then we're going to start our pass. So that, that's one pass that we've just done. Two. Three. Four. And that's five times we've done that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to secure that strand by tying that on to the other end. And then just cut that off. Now, doing it this way, what we end up with is we don't end up with bits of string tied off or tied into anything. So it makes it very easy later on to be able to get out of this situation that we're in. So some people call this style of string a continuous loop string. Uh, basically for recurve in, in most most applications this is the most common way of making a string so that's our first layer so we've gone around the post five times so by rights by counts there should be ten strands of strings in total five on this side and five on that side so we'll put the next layer on and we do it exactly the same way continuing in the same direction So we start off with our tie off, again around the back, but this time we stay following the layering of the string and five times we go around. That's four, and this is our fifth. And then we just tie that off. Now by blending colors like this, when we actually come to the rendering process, it will actually change the dynamic of the colors a little. So that red isn't gonna be so red. Okay, so that's pretty much our string, as, as you can see it there. So. You know, uh, that's, that's basically the start. That's how we start this string. So as you can see there, that's how we've started the string. And if you wanted to know what was going down on the other end, as you can see, we've just gone around the fence post down the other end. But you can see that both the ends are sitting in that 45 degree angle. Okay, so we're gonna move into starting the serving on this string. There's no, as you notice, there is no knots tied into this at all. We haven't looped back on anything. We haven't done any fancy winding or anything. The way that I, I make a string, I've come up with this way because of uh, issues that I've seen with other strings. And you notice a lot with factory made strings, uh, they separate where the loop is. They start to come apart and break. The way that I've done it and, and, I, and I find making them my way, I don't have too much of that issue. Don't be too concerned with that tension at this point. This will stretch in the next few minutes. So don't be concerned about this, but it's very important that when you start, where you make your mark to start your string, you do need to count, in fact, probably a half an inch of stretch and turns. So be prepared that if you mark it at 66 or 68 or 70 inch on the nose, it's never that way. It's generally about half an inch to almost an inch of difference by starting and finishing. So now we're gonna get on to, to getting this started. So you've got your two strands here, you've got these starting strands here. Take this side of the string and pull it over to there. So you've now created three sides, okay? Most jigs have a bolt that tie them down 
and hold those true. Loosen that off. And we're gonna turn those arms until we're perfectly square. Tighten that back up. And now you can see there's like a triangle shape happening here. Okay, but we've got plenty of room. But we're between our bars, okay? This is where we're working from. You can see that that original string is in there, the starter string, that's in there, okay? So again, still no loops, no tie-offs. We're gonna get our serving jig. Uh, for this principle, we're using a biter serving jig, probably one of the best uh, available in the market. Um, very well made, enables you to get plenty of tensioning on the string. Um, the way that I tend to make my strings, I like my tension to be incredibly tight. Um, there is a difference of opinion in this with the tension of a string. Um, you do hear some people say that it shouldn't be too tight. I disagree. Um, one of the biggest compliments that I get for when I make a string is just how smooth and silky that serve is. Now, the serving we're using today is a Majesty serving. Um, it's very, very fine lovely thin serving so it will give us that really nice professional finish to our string now today we're making the string in right handed not left handed so I'm starting at this side of my string so this is in front of me to the start of my right hand side starting the string how do we start our serving this always seems to be a bit of confusion for everybody so I will do this as slow as I can as you can see, I have the jig in my right hand, the tail piece in my left hand. I'm going to reach through and I'm going to make a shape. It's just straight up and down, nothing fancy. I'm going to take my left hand and tie it over the string. So you can see the jig is going to go up. I simply loop my jig over the tie, coming across that starting cable. I go over about two times. Still not a knot, all we've done is just loop over. So we keep this tie coming towards us, okay? So this stays towards you and you give, you, give yourself plenty of room to hold that. Okay, put maybe two or three turns in there and you've started. Now we're quite a fair way from our post and because this is our top part of our serving, because the way that I make a string, my right hand is the top part of the string, my left hand is the bottom of my string. And if, if you're left handed, you may want to work that way as well. But we're going to slide this over just a tad, about a thumb distance from our post. Okay, so there's the post. You can see my thumb is about where that string is starting. Keep hold of that dag, keep that tension nice, and we're going to flip that over and keep it going. So we're going to go about an inch into the string, okay, so we've gone down about an inch, we pull this dag out, and I'm going to try and zoom in here for you, so you can see that dag coming up from the serving there, as you can see we've got about an inch of serving along here, we're going to take our scissors, and all we're going to do is take the blade, the blade of the scissors and nick that off nice and close we don't want to have any sort of big hang out here we want to make that as clean as we can then we're going to keep serving that nice and tight now you're probably noticing that down this end here the string is actually starting to twist and bind up don't worry too much about that. If it gets too tight, just flick that back and the string will reset itself. But you'll need to do that all the way through. Okay, so we're just going to keep that going. And I'll zoom back out again so you can see the movement as it comes. But what I'll try and do, I'll try and get it right in on that serving for you. That's about as close as I'm going to get. But you can just see how fine that serving is. It's lovely and tight. So 
we're still going to continue on. Try and keep your rhythm to your jig pretty consistent in that serving. You know, a lot of people do overhand, underhand, overhand, underhand, but just keep flicking it nice and even. Don't try and get too aggressive with it, too many flicks. You will lose that little bit of tension in the string. But it's very important that you try and keep that rhythm very consistent. Now, this video will be posted in real time. So as you see me make this string, there is no editing, shortcuts or sped up film. This is done as you're watching this string. Other than when you see me just talk on camera, it is me making this string from start to finish. Okay, and you will see it actually doesn't take that long. Now there are so many ways to make a recurve string or a compound string. And look guys, I don't care what anybody says. There's no right way, there's no wrong way. You simply have to experiment and find what works for you. So we've gone about equal distance. You know, we've got about a thumb over here and about a thumb over there. Maybe another couple of turns. When we get here, we're going to pull that off. We're not going to cut it, it stays attached. Okay, but you can see that lovely thin serving that we've now got. It's pretty flawless, absolutely smooth as silk. And you can even hear it. There's no bumps or grinds in there, absolutely perfect. So I've just zoomed back out for you. Now, so we've done our initial start of our serving. So that string there is served. That's our top loop. At this point, undo those two starter cables. So we pull that out. That's one side. That's two sides. So that is the start and the finish of our string that you can see here, okay? Again, we take those scissors, we just use the blade of the scissor. We get right in real close, nick that off. Now here, you've got one part of the string that's popping through. Don't cut that one just yet. Get rid of that other one. We loosen this tour bar off and we turn our string back to our 45 degree. Now what you probably can't see here is I have a mark where I align my V back to. So I know that it always goes back to the same point. So I know that when I make a string, that turn and everything else is consistent. We flick that back over. Now that string's gonna go lovely and loose. Feed it around. Okay, so here's our serving. You can see the string's quite loose. Now before we tighten that up, because this is a split string, we're gonna just open those strands up a little bit and we're gonna pull that up through, that loose starter strand that we had. We're gonna tighten this back up, getting that tension back going. Now you can see that it's quite loose now. We've got, from where we started, it's back being quite loose. Just re, when you've put that around, just turn the string so your two ends, your starter ends, are roughly together. So it's a bit hard to tell from this angle, but these two are actually right together. They're right opposite each other. One is about two mil in front of the other one. Which side, it doesn't really matter. So that's that dag that we had hanging off. I'm gonna grab our scissors, and we're just gonna nick that off, okay? Now, at this point, you can see that our strands are starting to flip and twist. That's when our little tool that we have comes in handy. We're going to insert that tool, because one side is nice and even here. We're going to insert that into there like so. And if you find that it's too hard to get in on the other strand, just with your tool, go to your other end. where it's not so tight. And get those strands realigned. Okay, so what I've done 
with this serving tool here is I've actually gone through my string and I've actually gone, okay, well there's my red, there's my black. My red's on top, my black's on the bottom. And I'm forcing one of the colors into a twist. Okay, so I know that on the other side of this, my black and my red are perfectly separate. They're not intertwined in any way, shape or form. And I know that my black is on the top, my red is on the top, and my black is on the bottom. Okay, so how do we go from here? Okay, so we've still got our jig hanging off. Take your jig over the string, like so, and pull it back. That brings those two together. Okay, then in a big long line, wind your string over. And try and keep that tension there to get all those twists in front of that serving tool. And as you come, open it up a little bit. Try and keep that angle nice and long. Because if you go too short with this angle along here, up to the point, it will be harder to serve back. Now you're probably thinking, why am I doing this? What I've actually done is serve down the string here. Okay, but I've got two lovely, one red, one black strands here. Now I've come all the way down, I'm opposite my pin. So this is actually straight opposite here. Okay, it's a bit hard from this angle to see, I know, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to explain it as best as I can. So we've got this long strand through here, and we've got this distance here. Now, what I've done is I've straightened up, and I'm simply going to go across that strand there. So I'm actually serving back towards this end. And I just do a few turns here, about four, five, keeping reasonable tension. So I'll try and zoom in on that for you. So as you can see, we've gone to this point here. We've got a nice little knot, and we're serving back towards our start point. Pull your jig in. So we get right up onto that string and get a couple of turns in. So I don't know if you can see that from here, but you can see how we're now coming back down the string. So we're going to keep that doing it. You've noticed that I've still got this serving tool here, keeping those strands separated. Okay, it's actually a very useful thing to do because then at least you know that those strings are separated all the time and it's a clean exit out of the end of this serving here. So we keep doing this. And I'm sorry if this looks very fast, but I guess it's just a bit of experience talking here. So you know we're at about the 15 minute mark here. Okay, so you know your arms will get a bit tired. And I'm going to try and adjust the camera very shortly when I get up near where we started that serve. Because that's where it gets tricky. That's where a lot of people have difficulties and that with this particular design and the way of making a string, it can get very awkward. So you serve all the way until you hit that string. Now, we've pretty much come there. And at this point, what may happen is you may end up almost starting to serve back on yourself. So if they find that that happens, just unwind it a couple of turns and go back to where you've done that. Okay? And we're just going to wind this next section by hand, keeping that flow consistent. You only need to do it maybe two or three times, and then the string should just follow its alignment in the same direction. Okay, so we're almost at the end. 
So as you can see, we've served up, we're over the top of that V. So those two original starters are just down about here. So we've gone over about a pinky depth. We're gonna go over just another couple more. And again, that tension that I've had from the start, it's still there, it's still lovely and tight. Pull your jig away. Give yourself about a good 600 mil, 700 mil worth of tie off. And the good thing is when you cut that jig off, as you can see I've cut that jig off, when you've done that, as you've probably noticed, it hasn't really unwound itself. It stayed pretty nice and tight. So, now this is gonna look a bit awkward on camera because of the angle. And I'm gonna try and do this over and under. Now, as you can see, my dag is coming from underneath the string, okay? So what we need to do is we need to put our finger at about four, two inches away from the string, and we're gonna bring that loop over the string over the other side. So one is under, one is over. So all I've done is come across, okay? So that is the movement, we're going across. I'm gonna zoom out. So you can actually see me do the movement. So the string is coming under. We want to take that string over. So that's right up near the end of the tie off here. Okay, so we're going to go through there. Now then you've got a big hole in front of you. Bring that back through. Okay, and you keep feeding it back through that hole. Now keep the distance. Okay, so I'm going to just pull that and keep that tension there. I'll try and zoom in for you so you can see hopefully what's happened here. So now you should see that there's a bit of a tie off here. We're going to feed that through about, let's aim for about nine times. Okay, now as you saw me start that we're underneath. So the dag goes underneath that and back along the string. Then simply wind it on the way we were going. Now we're at the end where we started. Here is our dag to my left. This is on my right. I'm simply gonna pull that through until it goes tight. Now this is where those gloves came in. Put one of the gloves on. I'll zoom out. So we've got our glove. Take that dag. Now it's really important here that you don't over pull it because you will break that strand. But just pull until you see it start to bind up on itself. So keep pulling. Yeah, it's about there. Now while under tension, take your scissors, chop chop, and cut it about two inches away from the string. And then we're going to finish this off. So here's our dag sticking out the side. We're going to light that. And let it burn up to the string. Generally when it hits the string it'll put itself out. With that glove, smooth it off. Okay, I'm just going to change camera angles. We're going to come around, we're going to have a look at that serving and how it ended up. Then we're going to do the other end. So as you can see guys, that's that end that we finished, okay, it's lovely and fine, really nice and tight. So unfortunately I, the camera won't let me get much closer without going out of focus. So um, I've, I'm trying to keep it as close as I can without it pulling focus on me. Oh, back it out. So there you have it guys, 
there's that serving that we did before it's absolutely perfect we've gone about the tie off the, or the original loop that we started with the serving is somewhere down here so we've actually gone about half an inch up into that loop there so that loop if you put it in relation to my thumb it's just a bit bigger than my thumb okay so we'll go to the other end and we'll do that end okay so we've got our other end down here now that tool that we used before I'll just bring that up that you can see I've still got it sitting in the string now when we split this apart this tool's going to have to stay down that other end down near where that tie off was so we'll just slide that back down and that just keeps all the strings lovely and in tune so you keep that nice separation so we've still got our red and black completely separated again same as what we did down the other end we simply take that over now before we do this we're going to put a little bit of tension on this just a few turns just to get that tension back into the string loosen that off turn it so we're at right angles and tighten it back up again now like I said guys the way that I make a string it's not necessarily gospel but I find these work I get a lot of compliments about the quality of the string and I have people that also use these strings for some of their traditional bows so they do work quite well so as you can see we've got our jig again so get yourself a good start line okay it's plenty of hangover that jig is nice and tight keep those bolts tight and again we're going to start so this is my right hand this is my left again we start up we pull our right hand up and all we do is simply cross over so like so creating that loop and we go over again and over again and over again so hopefully that was pretty easy to see I'll zoom in a little bit so all we're doing is simply going over that loop now this end doesn't need to be as big as the other end because it's our tail end so we've got about a thumb distance so we're just going to go that little bit more so almost about three quarters of our thumb as you can see where it is on my thumb from the end that's about roughly where it is now if you want to get more specific with measurements guys you could take your ruler and we're going to go from the centre about an inch and a half to where this knot should start and we're going to finish about an inch and a half on the other side okay so just so you can see I'll turn that there so we're going to finish about an inch and a half somewhere around here on this side okay so once you've got a couple of turns in there this is your dag tighten that up until you get to the tip of the string keep hold of this dag and get that about an inch of serving done and again you're going to have that string twist on you because of that tension and as I said every so often let that tension off so you can let the string recover okay so you can see that it wants to spin back we've done about an inch sorry guys I keep getting in front of the camera there we'll cut that off all right and then we'll continue that serving And from time to time that impatience will kick in and you'll really want to rush it but guys try and keep it even and steady again let those turns off every so often let that string recover so we're almost there and if you want just keep checking your measurements to make sure it's reasonably consistent 
got about half an inch to go. And it's actually important you get this end right because if you don't, you gotta kind of strip it and start again at this end. So we should be that equal distance. Now one side I can tell here is this gonna be slightly different. I let that flick out a little bit and I pull it down so I can turn this string. So I'm gonna turn this back to that angle we were at. As I said before, I have a mark in this jig of where I take my V2, my V bar 2. It's the same spot every time. I turn it back, tighten it up, and then I pull that string over. Now, a little bit of tension's gone out of that string. We're going to wind a few turns on and keep that tension nice and tight. Now, what you can see here at this end is we've got one end that finishes here and one that finishes back here okay I've probably gone a little bit short on this other side which will make it tricky when we do our tie off but that's actually about spot on the length we want for our bottom end of our bow okay that's going to give us a really nice tight D loop on that bottom okay so we go back to our tool that we had and we're going to pull that down we're going to get all those twists and turns in the string. We're going to bunch them up here as much as we can. Taking our jig, go over the string, pull the two together. Start your big angle. And just keep moving that back as you go. So as you can see, we've gone down about there. Now, it's a bit hard from this angle because the post looks like it's in a different area. But believe you me, this here, just so we know, is a straight line. Okay? So we go down to just in front of that post, and then we come up, and then we come back over that string tie. Okay? So we go back. So if we can zoom in, So there's, this is heading back towards our post, okay? And all we're doing is simply coming backwards, serving back towards that post. So we get to about there, we're going to pull our jig up, get it nice and tight against that string, make sure we're right on track, and we're ready to go. Just zoom out. Now because this is so close to this post, this jig is actually going to hit it. So what I do is I tend to pull it away so I can let that free spin until I get clear of that post. Otherwise you get an annoying clank, clank, clank every time you hit it. So yes, we try and keep this video as uncut as possible so that you can actually get a taste of how long it actually takes to make this string. So everything we're doing is doing in real time. We're not speeding it up, you know, no flash photography, nothing like that. But yes, everything's done with smoke and mirrors. All right, so we're at where our first part finished. Okay, so a bit hard to see from here, but you can see that's where that first tail finished. This is where you can have that odd chance of this bumping back on and coming back on itself. So when you get there, just loosen it off a little and just do it manually so you can keep the direction under control. Just for a few turns, then you should be on, then keep it going. Now we're at the end of that other one, and if you just flick it over, 
it will capture it. So there you go. We're actually on there now. So both those two are combined. Okay. We're going to pull our jig down. We're going to cut that off. And I've even loose let that go and you can see it's not bouncing back on itself because we've pulled that closed. Now, this end is very tricky to finish off. But again, as you can see, we're underneath. We're coming out from under the string. So whatever we do, we must go over the string. So we're going to gather it down here, loop it over, just in front of that post. And we're going to take it over once twice. Now you can see it's sliding up towards where we've come away. If that happens, just pull it back. Just let it go a bit loose and pull it back. Once you've got it over about three or four times, now you must remember that when you come back through towards this way, don't always make sure the threads follow each other. So don't let the threads cross over make sure they follow the line. So you've got it on about four times. If you give that a bit of a pull, you can see that it pulls those two strands together. Okay, I'll try and zoom in on there for you. Okay, so we've got these two strands together. Pulling this through. Okay, though I'm not really happy, that's quite close together. So I'm going to let that go and I'm going to slide it back up towards that bar again. I'm going to try and get that pinched a little bit further up so we get a little bit more wiggle room. And we're going to keep going through. Like a snake back towards our other end. So again, we go through about eight times. Okay. So we have one end here, and that's the end of our serving there. Okay. So this is the end of our serving, and this is our tie-off section. So you can see there's a gap there. Now, what I'm going to do, as you can see, this is my, this strand that my thumb's on now, wiggling it, that is our under strand. We take the dag underneath that and capture it. And then we wind on in the same direction we were going originally. Now keep that tension pretty consistent if you can, keeping it lovely and close to the original serving. If you do that, it should stop this serving from jumping back on you. If the serving on this side gets too close, Count how many strands you have to go. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Five turns. So if we actually go over the top of it, we need to remember we've gone over five times. And that's actually really important for when we come to the finish of this. Because it will look like you've actually got a big bump there. But if you keep that going over, it will. And there you go. That just pulled that started to pull that through. So this is our dag end. Zoom back out. So this is our dag end. We pull this through. When you get near the end, let it slip through. And that's caught. Okay. Again, we grab our glove. We grab our glove, get a bit of tension on here. And the reason we use the glove is that you can get a good grip on it. It kind of slips through when it gets a bit tight. As you can see, my hand slips, but it doesn't cut your fingers. This string serving material is like a knife. It will cut that your skin so quickly. We just trim it off. Grab our lighter. and we smooth it off. Now as you can see, 
Our strands are perfectly separated there. So now we have a perfectly finished top and bottom end string. Okay? So from this point here, we need to put our turns in. Now, if you can see here where the join is, and I'll just try and zoom in on there. I actually have a mark that I've written here of 66. So that's my 66 march mark. So that's a 66 inch string. But you can see there's at least nearly three quarters of an inch here from where the mark is to where we have actually made the string. So we've actually made the string about three quarters longer than 66 inch. So we're going to come back out, zoom back out of here. Okay, now the next part kind of happens pretty quick. Okay, so we're going to loosen that tension off. We're going to leave our separator in the string, just for now. And we're going to tie that off, or pull, pull this string off, okay? Now, if you're right-handed, roll the string forward. And do it about, probably, 20 times. That's a good place to start. So about there. Put the string back on, and we're going to crank that tension right up. Now you probably remembered before, when we started, I said we started with 20 strands. Okay, so this is where it gets a bit tricky. Okay, but as I said, we had that three quarters of an extension there in the middle. Um, we've now reduced that by about a quarter of an inch. So we'll go back to that mark. There. You can see we haven't actually reduced it that much. There's the original mark. So it's pretty, we've just come out just a little bit. So we're going to come back out of this shot. Okay, so we've put the twist in the string. And let me see if I can get in there so you can see. You can see we've got that lovely candy cane look through the string. Okay. I'll just try and move you back a bit. Try and get it all in shot. So it's a bit hard to, to sort of keep everything right in shot here. I'll make it about middle 50-50. So now we've got this tool here that we had before. Okay? Now what I do is I slide it up and down the string letting the turns just sort itself out. What it does is it scrapes a little bit of that wax off the string, okay? But what it also does is it smooths the distance with the twist. Okay, now we've got one more step we have to do before we render this string. So we're gonna take this back to about the middle, okay? And you can just see how much wax this has actually pulled off that string. What we're going to do is we're going to turn that and open that string up. Okay? Let's zoom in on there for you. Now, like I said, we started off with 20 strands. We now need to remove two strands. So we're going to pull one out of our red line. Now, when you get to this step, if you find the string has bound itself up and it's a bit tight, Take the tension off, okay, because that string has now kept that distance. But I'm letting that tension off, okay. Find the loosest strand you can, and we're going to remove one black strand. We just cut it. So we've cut and removed one black strand. 
have to pick a red one. And we cut one red one. Okay? Now before we actually remove it, we're going to put that tension back on. Okay, so we've got the two dags hanging off here that you can see. We've got this end. So we're going to remove the black one first. And just pull it till you get to the end. And it will want to wind itself around. So get it all the way to your end with your scissors. Now do not burn the string. Simply get as close to that can as you can and use the scissor to remove it. And do the same with the red one. And just pull that through. It doesn't matter which strand you cut, it's just very important that whatever you do, you pull it all the way back and get it close as cut to there as possible. Okay, so I'm going to just for speedy NC steak, I'm going to just go back to that middle there. I'm going to remove those other two. Get off. Sorry guys, I keep jumping in front of the camera. Remove that black one. And the other thing is by removing this two in this fashion, helps keep that separation between the black and the red perfectly aligned. So you end up with that really nice professional candy cane look. Which I absolutely love. Okay, so we've got that lovely twist in that string. Let's remove our tool. And that's pretty much our string done guys. Now we've got one more step to do before we get it onto the bow, check brace side, check twist and everything else. We're going to actually finish this off and render it. So we're going to take a bit of leather that we have, we're going to put our gloves on. It's important that when you use your gloves, try and find a nice soft leather to work with. Try not to use abrasive leathers. The gloves that I choose to use in here are actually riding gloves, okay, they're for horse riding um, because the leather is extremely soft. It's a bit of an expensive way to go, but when you're making lots and lots of strings, you kind of get your money back on the value of the gloves. Okay, so we're actually going to start with the gloves on, rubbing that string. And we just start off nice and slow. Now, it will start to get a bit hot under hand. Okay, now what we're doing is we're actually smoothing all the wax, all those little notches and twists in that string, we're smoothing it out. Okay, so we've done that little bit. We grab our leather that we had, put our leather on, get it nice and tight, and get some speed to it. If you can get a nice rhythm going, you get a lot of speed, nice tight grip, you will see the string start to look like liquid. And that's the wax melting and actually softening up. Now you're probably thinking, what does this do? Now what it does is it smooths the string out, it gets the wax into the string. Now I know that that's getting through because I can feel that heat coming through that leather that we were using. Okay, I can feel that heat coming through. Okay, you can see the wax peeling off there. With a cloth, just wipe that string down from end to end gets off any of that excess wax, hit it again. You will need to do this for a couple of minutes, okay, it's really important. And I skip a step that I used to skip when I first started making strings. And then when I started getting this step done, I found my strings were so much nicer to shoot and they were quieter too. So. You know, I'm just keeping that tension in there, keeping that leather nice and tight. And you can feel the heat coming through. And the heat does get red hot, guys, so be careful when you're doing it. Um, 
when you get near the end, switch back to your gloves. Nice tight grip. And like I said, be careful because it gets quite hot and that heat will sneak through that glove and it will burn you. Okay, so that's pretty much that string finished. I'm just going to wipe that clean. And I'm hoping we'll be able to zoom in on this. I'll try and hang it up so that you can actually get a closer look at how it turned out. Loosen it off. And one thing you'll notice is that string, I've now loosened that off nearly two inches. And that string is staying perfectly intact. It's not spinning, it's not twisting. And it comes away. And you can just see it's like wire. All right guys, so we've finished that string now. So, you know, as you can see, there's our two loops that we started with. You can see one's clearly bigger than the other and one's the bottom. Why are they so different? Well, first of all, you never get the ends wrong. One's always the top, and one's always the bottom. Okay, you can see how we finished them off. Hopefully the camera will let, let you come in on these. Get my finger there, to hopefully get it in focus. So, you know, we've got two really nice stiff ends. And you can see with the way that we've got the tension, they really don't give you a lot of movement. The string, well, you can see that lovely black and red stripe through the string, almost a perfect twist. And that's simply because we did that division. And when you render it properly, the string will pretty much maintain its integrity throughout the balance point there. So if I pull that, and I've actually got it holding it down there. So that's how much that string is stiffened out. So guys, if you have any more questions about the video, uh, I know it's a bit hard to see some of the stuff that we did, but look, if I've missed something or there's something you can't see, flick me a question. I'll try and get to it as quick as I can, and I'll try and make it as explanatory as I can. It's very hard on video to try and show you some of the little things because cameras just won't really zoom in or having the cameras that we have, it just doesn't allow us to zoom in on what we do. So guys, I'll edit this in a way and hopefully you found the edit, the way I've edited this a bit helpful. But um, guys, I tried to make a, a tutorial for you on how to do basic string making. The way that I make it, as I said, it's a personal way. It's a way that I've come to after making hundreds of strings. And I really do find this way the easiest and the most reliable. And out of this, at this string, I'll get maybe no more than a quarter inch of stretch. So for now, have a great day and we'll see you again soon.